Essence of Ribu Gita, Part 2 Having realized that the world picture on the screen self is evanescent and essentially non-existent, one should ever remain still and blissful in the firm conviction of ever being the sole Brahman self only. This conviction should be maintained even while functioning as an individual in the world of name and form. This matured state of abidance in the self is called Sahaja Nishta, the natural state. In that blissful self, wherein there is no action of body, speech and mind, no virtuous or sinful karma and the fruits thereof, one should remain still, eschewing the least trace of thought. In that self, wherein there is neither conceiver nor conception of the world of names and forms, one should remain blissfully still, eschewing the least trace of thought. In that self, wherein desire, anger, covetousness, confusion, bigotry and envy are all absent. In that self, wherein there is no thought of bondage or release, one should abide blissfully still eschewing the least ripple of thought. Firmly abiding in the self, one acquires the totality of all knowledge and achieves the successful completion of all endeavours and duties. In that state, one should abide blissful and still, eschewing the least ripple of thought.
mind merge completely in the self, one becomes a lord without rival, steeped in bliss beyond compare. In that state, one should abide still, free from the least trace of thought. I am that self, which is integral, existence, awareness, bliss, the soul, impartite, of Brahman self, firm in the conviction, born of this experience, one should abide still, free from the least trace of thought. In the conviction that I am the self, in which no thought, ego, desire, mind, or confusion can exist, one should abide still, free from trace of thought. The firm faith of being the self is sufficient to dispel all thought and establish one in Brahman's self. In due course of this practice, even the thought involved in that faith fades away, leading to the spontaneous effulgence of the self. If a person hearkens to hear this teaching and practices the faith, even if they are a great sinner, they are washed clean of all their sins and is established in Brahman's self. There is certainly no such thing as mind with its constituents of thought and thought forms of objects. In this conviction, one should ever abide still and at peace in the state of thought-free, alert, awareness self which endures after all suddeners, and its rigours have exhausted themselves in Brahman's self. Having gained the experience that there is no creator, 
no Maya, no duality, and no objects at all. And that pure awareness self alone exists. One should ever remain still and peaceful in that state of selfhood. If a person gives heed to these teachings, they would certainly gain the grace of Lord Shiva and attain the state of selfhood, even though immersed in the dense darkness of nescience, which could not be banished by the glare of a million suns. Why waste words? This is the truth in a nutshell. Only those who have earned the grace of our Lord Shiva by long devotional worship will get the rare opportunity of reading this scriptural text which leads to the bliss of peace everlasting in Brahman self. Jnani who teaches, thou art the thought free, alertly aware, absolutely still, ever blissful, intensely peaceful, unqualified Brahman self, is the true Sat Guru and others are not. Unbroken abidance in the state of alert awareness, unruffled by thoughts, is self-realization. This is at once the spotless Jivan Mukti and the magnificent Videya Mukti. This state is easily attainable only for those who have earned the divine grace of Shiva by deep devotion and not for others. What is stated here is the import in a nutshell of the message of that charming crest jewel of the Vedas known as the Upanishads.
those who give heed to this message and abide in accordance with it will forthwith attain mukti. They will not suffer from the least particle of affliction. They will enjoy a bliss far greater than the bliss attained from this and all other worlds. They and their environments will be filled with the plentitude of auspicious events. Totally free from all trace of fear, they will never again enter the cycle of births and deaths. They will become the immutable Brahman self. All this, we swear, is the truth beyond doubt. By our Lord Shiva, again and again, we swear that this is the fundamental truth. That state of still, pure, effulgent awareness is moksha, the state beyond compare. Those who maintain an unbroken abidance in that supreme state will never more be touched by suffering or confusion and will be absolved from all duties. Such duties, if any, will somehow be completed without any volition on their part. They will eternally abide as the sole supreme self. By the persistent and continued bhavana of I am the Brahman Self, all thoughts and feelings of differentiation of self and non-self will drop off and permanent abidance in Brahman Self will be achieved. This bhavana is possible only for those with a keen inquiring mind intent on knowing the self and not for those who are indifferent about self-knowledge.
ignorance and indifference in regard to the inquiry of the truth about oneself is a storehouse of nescience and trouble blocking the view of the self and creating in a split second all sorts of illusions and harassment of mental worry. Non-inquiry renders bhavana impossible. In short, non-inquiry will steep one forever in the ocean of samsara. There is no greater enemy for one than non-inquiry. Therefore, this habit must be overcome in order to fix the mind in the bhavana which leads to abidance in the self. Inquiry should be made this wise with the kind help of the Satguru one should inquire who am I what is this world what is the reality behind all these Staying in the company of sadhus and respectfully questioning the Satguru Jnani, one should first make oneself clear about the objective to be obtained. This is an important aspect of the inquiry. After thus making sure of the objective, one must firmly abide in that objective of soul, Brahman self until the self is unmistakably experienced. The conscious, introspective concentration of self-inquiry heals all thoughts and destroys the dense darkness of nescience. It effaces all worry. It illuminates the intellect with the radiance of pure awareness. It wipes out all conceptual confusions. It fixes one in Shiva self. It transforms a host of impending disasters into auspicious events. 
And lastly, it destroys the ego mind utterly with all its afflictions. Only by those strong-willed persons who make earnest and persistent self-inquiry will the turbulent mind be controlled and fixed still in the practice of firm bhavana. In due course, all thoughts and nescience will disappear yielding place to the effulgent awareness self of Mukti. One should relentlessly pursue self-inquiry until all conceptual forms of creature, world and creator merge and disappear in the pure, thought-free, alert, awareness self, enabling one to abide in that bhavana of the experience. I am the Brahman self. It is only the mind which appears as the world and bondage. There is no world other than the mind. On inquiry, this mind turns out to be nothing more than a group of ripples, thoughts, in the still ocean of pure awareness Shiva Self. I am that Shiva Self only, and there is nothing apart from me. One should ever abide in the conviction born of this experience. There is no world apart from the mind. What appears as the world is only the mind. If this mind is investigated, it turns out to be nothing more than a bundle of thoughts based on the primary thought of I am the body, called the ego. If this ego, I, is inquired into and its identity searched, it gets swallowed up without a trace in the pure awareness being Shiva Self. 
one should maintain this firm bhavana. I am self Shiva. Until that state of being, the Shiva self, becomes a spontaneous experience, free from the effort of bhavana. In me, the pure awareness self, the universe is born, maintained and dissolved as the mind. Therefore, there is no mind and thought forms of objects apart from me, the self. In this firm experience, one should ever abide. one should ever abide as pure Shiva self by the firm experience that there are no thought forms of creature, world and creator apart from the mind which is just an array of ripples in me, the still ocean of pure awareness self. And therefore, I am the sole being, Shiva Self only. Even as the world, seen in my dream, is not apart from me, but only my creation. Even so, the world of the waking state is only a creation made by me and seen by me in the medium of my pure awareness self. In this experience one should firmly abide The rock firm conviction of I am the self is the sure mark of firm abidance in the self. Abidance in that conviction under all conditions is true divine worship. Meditation on God incantation of mantras, practice of right conduct in life, contemplation, 
integral yoga, wisdom of the self, and moksha as well. Whatever appears as Maya, creator, creature, mind, world, names and forms are the pure Brahman self only and not apart from that self. steady abidance in the rock firm conviction born of the experience of I am the self is the greatest yoga total dissolution of the mind true renunciation true wisdom and jivan mukti as well. Whatever names and forms are seen by me in my dream are not anything apart from me. Even so, this world seen by me in my waking state is not anything apart from me, the awareness self that I am. The wise one should give up all differentiation of self and non-self and abide as pure self only. If this world of the waking state is not evanescent in its nature, whatever is seen in the waking state must be seen during sleep also. Since I as pure self exist alone and always, there is no room for thought of non-self world. I, self, Brahman, is a sole existence. No world exists during the absence of the mind and there is no mind apart from my awareness. So mind and world are nothing apart from the self. And I am ever that soul, existence, awareness, Brahman self.
the wise one should abolish all thought of differentiation of self and non-self. I see neither mind nor world during my sleep. In my dream, there is mind with its creation, the dream world. The dream world is falsified in my waking state. But I, self, exist always. Arguing thus, one must give up all differentiation of self and non-self and ever abide firmly as a thought-free, alert, awareness, self, Brahman. All diversities of world, mind, maya, wakefulness, dream, sleep, talk of you and me, are evanescent, and yet not apart from the self. Thus the wise one should give up all thought of self and non-self and abide as self only. In dim light, the illusion of a serpent is seen in a rope and this serpent is nothing but the rope. Even so, all illusion of non-self exists in the self only. Thus the wise one should give up all thought of self and non-self and ever abide firmly in the peace of the self. Wisdom of integral experience. I am the non dual, transcendental, motionless, peaceful, bondage freedom, notion free, sky of pure consciousness only. With this experience, one should reject all differentiation of self and non-self and ever abide firmly in the peace of Brahman Self.
One should give up all Hatha yogic practices like breath control. All religious dogmas and their diverse sadhanas and be ever satisfied in simple abidance as the self only. Only those who contemplate on Lord Shiva Self, the pure supporting screen of all manifestation, gain the pure experience of Sahaja Nevakalpa Samadhi. Apart from this devotion to Lord Shiva, there are no other means leading to liberation. The non-dual soul being existing in deep sleep conjures up a world in the dream state. Even so, the shadow world conjured up in the waking state is the work of the power inherent in one's own Brahman self. Abiding firmly in the experience of pure Brahman Self, one finds that the mind and all its confabulations are lost forever. One should remain firm in the conviction, I am the self, and reject all thoughts like, I am this body, and this world is real. If one maintains this habit unremittingly, this false belief will drop away even as a flower held in the hand slips away when one falls into deep slumber. One is solely responsible for one's own liberation or bondage since the choice of destroying the restless mind or allowing it to roam at large rests with that one only. Therefore, one should conquer the restless mind by steady abidance in the pure, thought-free, alert, awareness self only. This steady abidance is moksha.
You are the sole supreme Godhead, the self. There is nothing apart from you. This we declare to be the ultimate truth after a complete analysis of all the scriptures. By the holy feet of Shiva, we swear this to be the truth beyond all doubt. By the feet of the Satguru, we swear again that this is the truth declared by the Upanishads. charitable gifts, all pilgrimages to sacred places, all sorts of mantra japa and worship of diverse gods must be firmly given up in favour of steady practice of the teachings of this book only. All yogic practices, all philosophical pursuits, all devotional exercises, and all faiths and beliefs should be abandoned. One should confine oneself to practice of the teachings of this book only. By the sole practice of the teachings of this book, all confusion and ignorance will be destroyed. Firm abidance in the self will be the positive result. With a fusion of the wisdom and peaceful bliss in the self, Mukti will be attained. sins are washed off by the practice of virtues running through many lives, one gets the rare opportunity of securing this treatise and practicing its tenets. By the feet of Lord Shiva, we declare that only those whose cycle of births and deaths has come to an end with this life will ever get this treatise in their hands and practice its teachings.
Thus spoke Nidaga. O oh my Lord, Satguru, by thy grace I have, in a split second, shed all sense of differentiation of self and non-self. I have attained the certainty that all is Brahman, and I am that Brahman self. I have become settled in the eternal bliss of Brahman self. I am verily the Sat Chit Ananda Brahman self. I am the eternal, undisturbed peace, devoid of name and form. I am the flawless, integral whole of all existence. Firmly, I am settled in my soul Brahman self. I have become Brahma, Vishnu, Udra, Mahesha, Sada Shiva, Parameshwara, and his spouse Pavati, Vinayaka, cohorts of sides hosts, and devotees of Lord Shiva all rolled into one. I am myself, all the Devas, and Asuras, Indra, the chief of the Devas, the lord of the eight cardinal directions, the community of sages, the swarm of demons, and in fact, the denizens of this and all other worlds. I have become the five elements, multitudinous worlds scattered in the skies, all existing things and their histories, all the Vedas and all the diversities of name and form. At one stroke, I have become the bodies, senses, and souls owning them. The mind, intellect, intuition, ego, the primal nescience, and the restless commotion of spirit, and in short, all that is seen and known. I am ever the eternal, pure, all-knowing, free, unshakable, non-dual, integral self. This is the firm conviction 
of the experience of the Jivan Mukta in the self. That mature jnani who is lost in the Mahamunam, the total stillness of the pure effulgent awareness Brahman self, devoid of the least trace of nescience, totally devoid of all consciousness of the body and its three states of waking, dream and sleep. Devoid of all distinctions of name and form and devoid of any thought of bondage or freedom is a Videya Mukta. Thou hast, O Lord Satguru, taken me across the boundless ocean of samsara in the boat of self-knowledge. To me, floundering in the misery of the belief that I am the body, thou hast taught me that I am the Brahman self and vouchsafed to me the bliss of all embracing awareness being. To thee I render these devout salutations. Salutations to thee, my Lord Satguru. Thou hast destroyed my illusion that I am the body and that the world is apart from me and is real. Thou hast given me the experience of my own Brahman self. Thou hast destroyed my wrong belief that karma is the road to salvation and showing that knowledge alone could make one free. Thou hast given me my salvation in the self. To that divine grace embodied, to that omnipresent beyond compare, to that Shiva self, Satguru, I render devout salutation. To that Satguru, who is the core of myself, who destroyed my nescience by the gift of awareness self. To that embodiment of self-knowledge do I offer these salutations.
salutations to the Satguru, who is the embodiment of undisturbed peace, without attributes, eternal purity, all pervasive, infinite sky of consciousness and integral perfection. In reply to the words of Nadaga, Ribu replies thus. O oh my son, you are now, no doubt, firmly settled in the bliss of Brahman Self. Having been freed from all illusion and nescience, 